In the last video, we looked at this and how it is assigned by default to things like the object and how it can lose reference to its binding. So regardless of how this was declared, it could also be bound. Now, when we refer to binding this in JavaScript, it is when we explicitly assign this to be a specific value. So regardless of what this would refer to by default, we could assign it to be something else. And there are three different ways that we could bind this in JavaScript. The first way is to use call. So if we do whatever our function is dot call and then pass it in a new object, that new object will refer to this or that is what this will be bound to. Also, if whatever function we're calling has additional arguments, we could pass those arguments in as well. Now, the thing about call is it's going to call it immediately. We're going to have this reassigned to the new object that we pass in. And if there are any arguments to be passed, they could be done that way. Then we have apply and apply does the exact same thing, except that when we pass in additional arguments, then we have to pass them in as an array. And the reason for this difference is in JavaScript, some folks like arrays because they could be sorted. They could be reassigned easier. You could run different methods on them. Um, you could change the values or map through them more easily than just individual arguments. So there are a number of reasons why in a code base you might see arguments that want to be passed as an array. Now, if you don't have a preference or if you don't have any arguments to be passed, all you have to pass is the new object to be declared as this, then you could use these two interchangeably. But I would suggest to stick into one that you think is going to be most common. Now, in addition to these, we also have bind and bind is different in that bind will not immediately call the function. It will just bind a new object as this. So this would be helpful if you're using that function reference scenario and you want to keep the binding of this or if you want to reassign it to something else. So let's look at uh, an example of each one of these in action so that we could see them all applied. Now, in this first code base here, we have a post object with an ID of one, and then we have a UI object, which just has a render method. And this render method takes a few parameters, and it's also using this. So the scenario you might imagine, maybe we have a big UI method and we pass different things and it renders it to the object and we could assign each one a unique ID so we could find that UI component later. And maybe we're saying what section of the body to apply it to. Maybe it goes in the footer, the body, the sidebar, the header, etc., or something like that. So this is what our UI method is set up to do. And then down at the bottom, or I'm sorry, when we call this within our UI render method, this is, if we have strict mode enabled, not going to refer to anything because we have this referring to the UI, but there's no ID assigned to the UI. So this should work. It is inside of an object. This is valid, but there's no this.id. So we know that it's going to break by default. However, when we call it down here, when we do ui.render.call and we pass in post, we're then saying, okay, post is now going to become this. So when we call it this way, this will refer to post and post.id is one. Likewise, we're passing in the other parameters. Now, these other parameters are just to show you how you would pass in parameters. If you don't have any, then we would just do dot call and pass in post by itself. So this same example when used with apply is going to look the exact same, except that we're passing in the parameters as an array instead. It's going to do the same thing. The code works the same and post will be assigned to this. Now in bind, it's going to work a little bit differently because bind does not call a function. It only reassigns this. So in this case, notice that we have this render one. I've taken out the ID and section parameters because those would work just as you would expect. But in this case, ui.render in the past, if we assigned it to R and created a new um, function that way, that would break the binding to this. So here we could explicitly assign post to this, and this is exactly what we want. Now we may also see a case where we still want this to refer to UI. So for passing a function reference, we could also pass UI in there and you might see that in, in action as well. So just to review this quickly, we saw that we could use call, apply, and bind. Now call and apply will both 
immediately evoke that function so it will run wherever you run call or apply and you could pass in a new valuable a new value to work as this and bind will work differently in that it only assigns this you still have to call that function later but it still will remember where this was bound to now at this point you may not know when you would use these and as we go further and as we get deeper into frameworks and libraries and different things like that, this is super important. And the binding of this, if you know, hey, this lost reference or I want it to be called a certain way, then that could be really, really helpful to know how to work with these. So again, if you're just starting off in your JavaScript and this is new to you, then uh, this may still be a little confusing of why you would want to know about this stuff and how it works, but you still should take the time to work through it. Now, if this is not your first time working Working with this hopefully you understood it a little bit more deeply um, or at least have a better idea of what's going on and can think of different examples of this in use so as we go into more projects and build more things we will definitely see times when we want to use call apply and bind and in other projects you will definitely see it used so it's good to be able to understand what it's doing so at this point, I would suggest setting up a few different objects, maybe a post object and a UI object is a good example, and passing in different properties, trying to set this as different things, trying to break it, trying to figure out when it wouldn't work as expected, etc., etc. And like I said, this will give you a good basis of how these things work. You know that they um, do exist in JavaScript, but if you're still a little unclear on, hey, I can't think of a ton of instances of when I would use these, that's okay at this point. We will get into that deeper as we build out more stuff.